Revelation. 21.4 is where I'm going to be at. That's actually where I've been at for the last couple of weeks. As I've been contemplating this and going over in my mind, being exhilarated by the thought of what we have to look forward to. That we're not going to be here long fighting. We do have to fight now. But it's not going to be for long. For those of you who do fight and get weary and have times of hard, hard times where it's overwhelming to the point of tears, it won't be for long. So keep pressing, keep fighting, keep struggling, keep denying the flesh because denying is here and now. There's going to come a time where you're not going to be denying anymore. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. And there's a couple of different ways I looked at it, but I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. Revelation chapter 21, 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Amen. For the former things are passed away. Does that sound good to you? Amen. To me, the thought of this, preparing this, was exhilarating. That it's all going to be passed away. All the things that gave us trouble, gone done with and then what will, what, will we have look, what will we have to look forward to then remember the glory years no there is, there is no glory these, these years are fighting years these are times of just, just to stay focused on getting out of here the, all the glory is up ahead to be with our God those are the times that we're looking forward to. That's what we're. That's what's pushing us right now. That's what's helping us to deny, deny, deny. Because of what we have to look forward to is accept, accept, accept. Being filled, abundantly filled. We have nothing but good things to look forward to. Now it's deny. Now it's fight. Now it's struggle. Now it's weep and cry and be hungry for the Lord. But there, it's going to be satisfied. We're going to be filled with our God. We're going to be, we're not going to have to go hungry anymore. When I was looking through the scriptures, I was seeing the places where we're talking about being hungry and then we're not going to be hungry anymore. Some might think of hungry as getting their belly filled. But I was thinking of being without our God and not, not having all that we want and desire. Our heart's desire is to be filled with our God. See, when we get there, we're not going to be hungry anymore. We're going to be full. We're going we're to have as much as we want and keep in free eternity. We're going to be with our God. Now... There was a couple of ways I, I looked at this. It was very profitable. But it says here, it says, and God, God shall. Now remember when Christ was here, he used people, men, to do things for him. But this, this is something that God himself is going to do. Think about how personal this is. Think about how when you're, when you're having a hard time, somebody who cares about you, somebody who really cares about you, and comes up and wipes away your tear, how, how good that feels. How really good when you're having a hard time. Now, we're going to be with our God, and he is going to, God is going to wipe away our tears. And we're not going to have any more need of those tears. Now, the way I was looking at this was how our God is not a God that likes to be lonely. It's not a God 
God's showing himself here. His mercy and his tenderness and his desire to, to be, he's got, we're going to be his dwelling place, the, the, God, the word of God says. So we're going to be with him. So right now, I was thinking about when we're going to, we're on our way here. We're on our way to glory. And God, he hasn't left us on our own. Our weekend together is, is kind of a first fruits. We've talked about this this weekend. It's kind of like a first fruits of this isn't going to be, this isn't like perfect here. We still have our flesh to deal with. We still get tired. We get weary. We all have personal things we struggle with. This week leading up to this week, you may have struggled with certain things that in glory we won't have to struggle with anymore. So I was thinking about how good our God is that he has placed us in a body with people that helps us to get to that point where God's going to be there to wipe away our tears. Here's something I thought about. Until we are there with our God, face to face, we have brethren to help us along. One part of the body may get weak, and then God will send strength to the other part of the body. And it helps. We help, we help one another. We're there for one another. We're there to carry one another. Romans 15, 30 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. See, I thought about this, how we're doing this weekend. We're striving together to see these things. We're, we're coming together. Now, I, I've been able to see, for my part, I've been able to see some of this. And then God gave other brothers and sisters other parts of it. And we're coming together, and we're, we're bringing this together here this weekend. Together. And Paul says, with me. Yeah, Paul, I was thinking about Paul here when he's, he's writing here Romans 15, 30. He's, he's here, this is this a godly man, a man who he, he did more than any others. But if you read what he's, he's written to the, to the churches, he never acts like he doesn't need anybody. Yeah. He's always, the way he's speaking is that God has given him something and he's given it to the body. That's what we're doing here, too. God's given us something. We're sharing it. And what do we do? We're strengthening one another. We're building one another up together. Nobody's on their own. I can speak for only myself. That when I'm on my own, I, my resources run out quick. But when I'm working together with the body, and they are strengthening one another, I feel stronger. Why? Is it my own strength? No, God is working within the body. God's giving it, and, and, and we're sharing. Now, God has joined us together so that we will be strong enough to overcome. And, and that's the goal, right? The goal is to be, the goal isn't just so that we can run a good race and come short of the, the mark. The goal is for us to finish together that we may receive a prize. And it says one may receive. I thought about that. We are one. We're running together and we're going to receive the prize together. One. We are the one that God, he's putting us together to run strong together. Second Corinthians 13, 11 says, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. God's going to be with us in this. We're not alone. We got each other and God, and we got our God working with us on our behalf. When we struggle, when we have pain, when we have suffering, God knows about it. He's there with us. And now here in my text, I'm going to, what I'm wanting to do is lead you up to the time that we're fighting, 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 fighting. And then there's no more fighting. God personally is going to wipe away the tears. God's going to be there for, he's, he's there with us. Now I understand that. But I mean, face to face, we're going to be together. So that's why he says, be of, be of one mind, live in peace. 
You know, some people, they're in this world, and they're just always troubled. Everything's troubling them. I mean, they just can't. The world troubles them. They trouble themselves. Everything's troubling to them. But God's saying to us, you look to where you're going to be heading here, and you could be at peace. Everything's a turmoil, but where is your peace? Your peace is up ahead. We're looking to where we're going. That's where we, I mean, of course, if all you can see is this world, it, it's a hard time for you to try to live at peace. It's a hard time to be peaceful when uh, so much evil is going on around you. Evil, unrighteousness, all the things that bother us, it's just all around us. But when we look up ahead of us, that's where our joy is. Our joy is where we're going. Well, we're going to have to suffer. But God has given us a promise that he shall be with us. Not just now, all the way there. He's going to be with us all the way. And then when we, make, when we get over on the other side, he's going to greet us. Think about that. God, the creator of everything, is going to be there to greet us. Now see, it, it's not going to go well for some. Now I understand that. That's not going to be a good greeting for some who have get, for some who have given themselves, who have denied God, who have clung to unrighteousness, who have continued to have no care about what the Lord says or what God is doing. That's going to be a bad day for them. But for us, that's why we come together this weekend. For us, this is what we look forward to. This is what we're striving for, is to be with our God. He is not a hard taskmaster. Amen. He is a good God. Amen. And we look forward to being with him. Just think of all the work that the Lord is doing to get us to be with him. He not only do we have brethren, we have angels. Genesis 19.15 says, God sent angels to warn Lot. He says, the angels came to tell him, get out, get out of the city, lest thou be consumed in iniquity. See, God is working on our behalf. He's not a hard taskmaster. He's not working against us. He's for us. We're seeing God here. We're not promised that hard times will never happen, never come our way, but we do know that God's going to be there with us. And he's, he's going to give us the strength that we need. He knows when we're suffering. He knows that. That's what this text is all about. That's why he's going to be there to wipe away our tears because he, he knows everything that you've gone through up to this point and he knows what you're going to have to go through. So he's waiting for us. He's waiting for us when we cross over. To my, I was thinking about this. It's like God wiping away our tears is, is he, God saying, I was there with you all along. I knew what you went through. I know it was hard, and that's why I'm here personally. Now, see, there's evil people in the world who says, what kind of God would let this happen? What kind of God? See, God's going to be right there going, I was with you all the way. I know what you went through. Because our reward is God. He is our reward. After we've gone through everything, he is the one we're looking to be with. He's the one. We're not on our own. God sends us the resources that we need. Genesis 19.15, talking about that with Lot. He didn't leave Lot on his own. Neither will he leave us on our own. Remember in uh, Genesis 28.12, it talks about there's a ladder going up from earth to heaven where the angels of God ascended and descended. Resources. God's given us what we need so that we can make it all the way. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death. Many live for here and now, not thinking about the future. See, death to us, as we think about this God waiting for us and God wiping away our tears, death to us, 
What does that mean to us? That means we finished. We're victorious. We've made it all the way. Death to us is we, we're done with suffering. We're done with shame and, and, and frustration and unrighteousness all around us. We've done with it all. But we're here now. We're here now looking to where we're going to be going. And that's where we get our strength. Remember Genesis 25 where Esau gave up his birthright for temporary satisfaction. And then later on in Genesis 27, 38, Esau lifted up his voice and he wept. Now there's, he cried. But there was nobody to wipe away his tears. He gave it up. He gave it up for temporary. See, we're not giving up. We're hanging on so that when we get to glory and we have tears, the Lord's going to wipe them away. Yeah. It doesn't say anything about Esau getting anything about him getting his tears wiped away. He wept. Yeah. But so what? He gave up. He gave in to the world. See, this is what we're fighting for is to get out of the world. Amen. It didn't matter for him. It was too late, but it's not too late for us. It's not too late for us to continue to see what we have up ahead of us. He wasn't willing to suffer a little bit of hunger, a little bit of pain. You know why? Because he really didn't care about having his birthright. He really didn't care. But we care. We care about our birthright. That we're born again into Christ Jesus. That we're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So are we willing to have a little suffering for now? Are we willing to have a little pain? Are we willing to have a little bit of denial now? That in for eternity we'll be denying no more. I say, yes, we are. We are told if we suffer with Christ now, that we will be heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Romans 8, 17. So let us suffer now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because what we have up ahead is much more than all of our suffering combined. You put all the suffering that the brethren have gone through combined from the time beginning until the time ending, and it's not going to even compare with having God wipe away your tears. Anyone who says that Christians don't have, won't have to suffer are just lying. Because God's up front with us. He's already told us you're going to suffer. But it's going to be worth it because I'm going to meet you on the other side. I'm going to be right there and I know what you've gone through. Amen. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. Philippians 1.29 We are being shaped, brethren, to fit into glory. There is a reason. God doesn't do anything for our reason. There's a reason why we have suffering. Whatever you're going through, whatever that you have, whatever struggle, whatever rejection, every bit of that, if you just look back in your whole life, not one bit of that was for no reason. Because God is preparing you to do a work in glory. He needs you to be strong for whatever work he's got you doing. I don't know what that work is. You don't know what that work is. But everything that you've gone through up to this point is no mistake. He is preparing you for glory. Suffering is not easy, and it comes with a lot of tears. But it's going to be worth it. Yes. We are talking about being with our God. A tender and merciful, this is in our text here, you see the tenderness and the merciful God that he is. How much mercy he has that he doesn't say, 
Yeah, you made it. Get in there, you big crybaby. I've had enough of you anyway. I've been watching this whole time, and all you do is know how to cry. Get over there. That's not how our God is. He's, this, is a, this is the way it is. He's merciful and says, I know what you've been through. And believe me, it's, gonna be, it's worth it. You've made it. Now let me wipe that tear off your eye. Let me wipe it off your cheek for you. Because I've seen every tear that you've had, and I, I felt it. And now you're going to be with me. And you're not going to go out anymore. For eternity, you're going to be with me. Amen. Your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. 2 Thessalonians 1, 4 through 5. You're going to be counted worthy. You're not going to get into glory and, and have God say, hey, how did you get here? You don't belong here. Get out of here. Depart from me. I never knew that. Those in Christ are going to have to hear that. You will be counted worthy. So we suffer now. We cry now. But it's not for long. See, so we want to count the cost and see that let's add it up. Compared to what's going to happen to us in glory to be with our God, it doesn't even compare. Whatever suffering we've been through, it doesn't even compare. Many, because many weep now. Luke 6, 21 says, Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Amen. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. I was thinking about how this, this is going to go down. We're going to be with our God. We're going to be full. And this isn't a laughter like you have here in the world, like somebody's telling a joke. The laughter is this joy that you're going to have of being with your God. That you're going to be full. And that you're going to be able to be with him. And you're going to have this joy that you've made it all the way. That there's... The, dist the distractions weren't enough to keep you from your God. The suffering wasn't enough to keep you from your God. The pain, not enough. You made it all the way to the end. And you could be with your God. The hurt and pain will not last. When we were with him, no more hurt, no more pain, no more tears. We're not, we're not going to need our tears no more. The tears are for here, not for there. Yeah. To have one who truly cares about you like God wipe away your tears cannot compare to anything that we can go through. Just to think about God doing this. After all of our suffering is over. You know, I thought about this season right now, especially since we got all this rain and everything, how when a farmer plants and he takes care of what he plants. A real farmer. The one who wants to make sure that the plant grows up and he, he weeds it and takes care of it and does all the things necessary. Not one day goes by without the farmer taking a look at it, making sure everything's going right. And then it comes to full bloom. I thought about this when I'm preparing and looking at this text. This is how our God is. We're not on our own here. 
He's protecting us. He's taking care of us. He's sending us the resources we need. And he's making sure that we're going to grow up and that we're going to be able to make it all the way. To me, that's a joyous thought that our God is working on our side. That as we continue to, to keep ourselves separate from the world and out of danger, God is right there working with us. We can be confident that he is taking care of us. We will not have to suffer for long. But we do have to suffer. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, There has no temptation taketh you such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will suffer you to be tempted, not to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. It's, see, it's not going to be easy, but you're going to be able to bear it. It's going to be bearable. It won't be, it won't be too much. We'll be able to bear it. So you suffer now, and you're faithful, and God will reward you for your faithfulness. Amen. He will be there waiting. God knows what you've been through. And it, just think of it this way. It's only a matter of time. All we got to do is a time. So much time ahead of us. For some of us, it's getting, we're getting older. Whether you, you're going to, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back or you're going to die. No, nope. matter of time. So for us, for the world, the world looks at time as getting old, like Brother Bob was talking about. They try to do everything to forget about it. But for us, we don't want to forget about it. We can look in the mirror and say, Ah, yes, time. Time is on our, time is on our side. The, the wrinkles in the mirror proves to me that I'm about out of here. The, the pain in my back and in my knees that I never felt as a young man was a reminder, is a helper for me to let go of this world is a reminder that I am not going to be here forever. That soon I'm going to be able to say, so long, world. It's been fun suffering with you. Not really. But I'm going to say goodbye to you now. I have to be with my God. So we will be with him. It's just a matter of time, and he will be there for us, awaiting us. You think you're looking forward to being there victorious? God's looking forward to you being there victorious too. Because he's going to receive the glory for you making it all the way. He's going to receive the glory that you denied ungodliness in an ungodly world where it looked like everybody, you've heard this before, this saying, everybody's doing it. God will say, not mine. Not my people. Have you taken a look at my servant Job? See? We're going to be there all together. And he's going to say, have you taken a look at my people? See how victorious they are? There's a number over here that you cannot even number. Victorious. Who are overcomers. Brother, this is going to be a good day to look forward to. I'm thankful that we have this weekend that we can all pull together our resources to remember God, to remember what he is doing, and to remember that Time is only so long, and then we're going to have all this behind us, and that we're going to be able to be with our God. Thank you, brother.